Well, we say good morning and praise the Lord. Uh, we do honor the Lord Jesus Christ as always. We are grateful to the Lord for blessing us and allowing us to come together and uh, to be in uh, the presence of those who will join us on this platform as we look into the word of God that we might know the things that the Lord has declared already and that we might come into the knowledge of who he is, what he's done, and that we might honor him for who he is and the great work of salvation that he has made available to those of us that will humble ourselves and receive those things that he has declared. We honor our pastor as always. We're grateful for the man of God being in our presence as God has blessed us to come together. And uh, we are simply workers in the vineyard doing those things that God has called us to do. He has called us to be ministers in the gospel and to continue the work declaring his truths to those who already know as we We'll all speak the same thing, and to those who have not come to that fullness uh, of the knowledge of who Jesus Christ really is, and have not accepted those things that he has done. So as we uh, uh, prepare to go into our Sunday school, remember we are studying from the I Am sayings. And as we study the word of God, um, then we certainly are coming to a greater knowledge of who he is and the things that he has done. So as always on Sunday, we uh, hand it to our pastor and he will bring us into our Sunday school lesson. We say uh, good morning and praise the Lord to you. And again, echo what teachers say. We thank God for another opportunity that God has blessed us and allowed us to come together that we may look into his word to see the things that God has so richly prepared for us and the rewards for us when we do the things that God instructs us to do. We do honor our teacher. We thank God for him, and we thank God for all that in the sanctuary you know, that are present with us this morning. One of the things, as I said, and, and Elder was talking, that, that just ran through my mind, you know, a lot of times we miss God because we're looking from a physical standpoint. But what we have to do, is a lot to see God in a spiritual way because this is for our souls, but all of our actions to reach him and to uh, be a part of him are in a physical uh, a way. That's why I say faith without works. So we have to work towards the things that God tells us to do. For like one time when Jesus said to them, he said, I am the bread of heaven that comes down from heaven. Any man eat of my flesh. In other words, because he was speaking in a spiritual way, eating of his teachings and, uh, uh, and, and they missed it. And they thought that he was going to eat his flesh. And they said, we can't do this, and we walked away from it. So today, we're asking God to bless us and bless you to open our ears and our hearts, our eyes, our minds to see exactly what God is saying to us, that even through scriptures, that the way may be revealed. And, and you might not grasp it all right now, but bit by bit, piece by piece, we just want to uh, uh, show you what God is saying to us to, to get to him and the method and the way that he has prepared for us to get to him, and it's through Jesus Christ. So as we go through the word this morning, go through the lesson, pray with us and for us, as it's July 21st, 2024, our series, John, John, I Am Saying. And our topic this morning, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Our focus verse is coming from John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Our lesson text is taken from John chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. Truth about God. Jesus is the only way to God and heaven. Truth for my life. I will seek Jesus as the only way, the only truth, and my source of eternal life. Our icebreaker for this morning. What are your favorite songs about heaven, either contemporary or traditional? When you think of heaven, what ideas or images come to mind? Our lesson outline. Let not your heart be troubled. Jesus is preparing a place for us. When we seek Jesus, we see the when we excuse me, when we see Jesus, we see the Father. 
There is only one on the throne of heaven. Jesus, the only one. Jesus is the only way. Jesus is, oh, me, Jesus is the only truth. Jesus is the only life. Bless you, Lord. Father, it is in your wonderful and holy name, Lord Jesus Christ, that we come again this morning thanking you for this privilege and this opportunity that you have blessed us. Thank you for allowing us to be partakers of your word as you open our understanding this morning to receive it, to help us to realize that Jesus is the only way to get to you. For you and him are one, for he is you manifested in flesh. And he comes to show us how to be reunited back with you from when we were separated in the garden. So Lord, bless us right now, Lord. Bless us that we don't lean to our own understanding or try to figure it out of our own uh, education. But Lord, by the power of your spirit, touch our minds and let us see with clarity and understanding the things that you are saying unto us. Oh God, do it for your glory. For God, it is your will. It is your word. It is not your will that any of us should perish, but we all come to repentance and have eternal life. So if that is your promise and plan for us, oh God, you will make this clear for us to see that we will come to you and know who you are before it's a day and hour too late. So Father, do it for your glory and for your honor. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So John uh, is revealing Jesus as Jesus declares, I am. Uh, you know, there, there, there's a, I don't know why after all of this time, but there is yet a lot of confusion about uh, who Jesus is. Well, Jesus declares himself, I am. But let's look at Jesus as Jehovah. Because Jehovah God in the Old Testament, in the third chapter of the book of Exodus, when God called Moses to go into Egypt to lead the people out, God himself, Jehovah God, begins to declare who Jesus Christ is when he declared, when Moses asked him, well, who should I say sent me? In the 14th verse, it says, and God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am, hath sent me unto you. Jehovah now begins to introduce that uh, uh, bodily uh, uh, incarnation of Jesus Christ as he declared in Genesis, the third chapter, when he says, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between her seed and thy seed. Jesus had already, you know, th this isn't a made-up way because of mistakes made by us. But Jesus Christ, God himself, had already had a way of salvation because he knew that there's nothing in this world but the lust of our eyes, the lust of our flesh, and the pride of life. And he knew that without an interpower, an interpower, we would not be able to make it. In the second chapter, in the seventh verse of Genesis, it says, and God formed man out of the dust of the earth. He blew the breath in him, and he became a living soul. So the body became a living soul. But we didn't have that life eternal because he knew that Adam would fall. He knew that we would need to be saved. He knew that we would need to be redeemed because of the sins that were in the world. So then Jesus begins to, uh, or God begins to introduce Jesus. We saw him first as the light of the world. Well, he was there in the beginning when Jesus, when, when Jehovah declared, let there be light. Well, he was talking about Jesus. And John now says, and the light came into the world, but they, they, they didn't recognize it. Still couldn't see. And then he says, you know, I am the door. Well, we need light to be able to see. There's a door we need to go into. 
and go through the door. Okay, why? Because he declares now that I am the way, the truth, and the life. So the life that we received in Genesis is not the life that we receive in this 14th chapter of St. John. Because this is the true life. Remember, Jesus is all. All. As we follow these I am sayings, Jehovah introduces Jesus Christ to us. And as Pastor already said, Jesus declared, I'm not different from the Father. And the Father's not different from me. You know, so these people with these mindsets of, you know, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. No, they're one. They're one. You know, and again, as Pastor gave us the outline, it says there's a three sitting on one throne. That's going to be kind of impossible. There's it's one throne. Crowded, yeah, it? <laughs> it's going to be crowded. There's one throne and one sits on the throne. And that is Jesus Christ in that bodily resurrection. Because what does the word say? God is a spirit. A spirit don't need to sit on a throne. A man does. And that's Jesus, God himself. So as, we, we un, uh, as God allows us to unfold this lesson into your hearing, give ear and hear what thus saith the Spirit to the church. Again, one of the biggest things it is is by accepting Jesus as being God, accepting Jesus as being the way to God. And I know sometimes the way it is phrased or the way it is spoken it seems like there are two people, but there's only one. There are different manifestations that, that he works in. And teacher said from the beginning, ever since man fell, it was God had already, he, he didn't just throw a plan together. It was already orchestrated from the beginning to get us to understand who he is. But what we must do, we must read with clarity. We must read with uh, understanding and we must read slow to understand what God is saying unto us because God was trying to get man back to himself and, 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 and he gave man all uh, different dip dispensations for man to work in to get back to God but none of them worked so God himself came to show the way back to him see again uh, teachers say we done done so many of these lessons but, but John chapter 1 I mean, if, if you go through John chapter 1 and read it slowly and dissect it, you will see what Jesus, as God, is saying unto us. If you go to that first, watch, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the, wor and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Now, in other words, it is talking about the manifestation of Jesus, but Jesus is not there yet. Mm -hmm. It's not his time, but it's identifying him as being with God. So now, but it goes on to say, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and in the life was the light of men. It talks about Jesus saying, I am the light, I am the way. It, 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 it's identifying him. John the Revelator is revealing to us mm -hmm. who Jesus is, but we have to read it slow and grab hold to it. I know sometimes it's like it don't make any sense. It goes on again, if you go to uh, verse 14, it says, he was in the world. Who was in the world? God was in the world, but he was in the world in the incarnated body of Jesus. But the world, and, and, see, he was in the world, the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. So in other words, they didn't recognize who he was because he didn't come the way they thought he should come. He didn't come in all of his splendor. He didn't come in all of his glory. He came as a man to show us the way to get to him. Because he was a spirit, we could not see him. So we couldn't understand nor see the way. So he became flesh. He became a man that he could show us and lead us back to himself. It goes on to say now, in that verse 14, and the, word, and the word was made flesh. Go back to verse 1. In the beginning was the word, and in the beginning was God. Verse 14 said, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. In other words, we didn't see the splendor and glory of God because the Bible says, if any man of God says, if any man look upon me, he cannot live. So in order for us to look upon God, to feel God, and to hear and follow his direction, 
he became a man. And all he was doing was showing us the direction back to him. But in the body, he did not make himself equal with God. He was saying, now this body, though I am God, I'm going to show you how to live and conduct yourself as human beings. But the Bible says in Hebrews, he became just like us. That he could show us to lead, to lead us and direct us in the ways of how to get back to God through the body and the presence of Jesus Christ. So this lesson uh, extracted from uh, John, the 14th chapter, which is a chapter that is so often read uh, at uh, the passing of loved ones. You know, it begins with, let not your heart be troubled. Believe if you believe in God, believe also in me. Well, prior to this, uh, you know, the recording of John 14, uh, you know, with, in, verse, in chapter 12, 13, and 14, we see uh, Jesus coming uh, to the end of his ministry on earth. Mm -hmm. And he begins to display certain characteristics that those who would follow him must need to follow. He, he also shared things with the disciples that he declared, you know, I'm doing this now so that when it comes to pass, then you can look back and understand. He would also do things and he says, what I'm doing now, I know you don't comprehend it, but this is what you must become. You know, things like, washing the feet of his disciples when he declared that he would be lifted up, you know, he would be betrayed. And he also declared, I mean, when they, you know, uh, John uh, was, uh, who was laying on the bosom of the Lord and, and Peter told him, ask him, who's he talking about? And, and John did. And when Jesus told him, he still didn't understand hmm. who Jesus was talking about. He said, he that dips in the sock and, and with me, he's the one that shall betray me. And then uh, after the sopping and, 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 and uh, uh, Judas was about to leave, he said, whatever you do, do quickly. Get it done. You know, he understood coming to this. So th these things, Jesus declared uh, that they might, he says, if you don't believe me for what I say, believe me for the very work's sake, those things that I've done in your presence, those things that I have declared. And, and this is what Jesus is calling us to do. He calls them to the humbleness. When he began uh, to wash the disciples' feet, and, and, and listen, th 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 I, I have absolutely nothing against mm -hmm. feet washing, but in the, in the Bible it says Jesus gave us an example, an example of humility that he would then wash his disciples' feet. And he was showing us that none of us are higher than the others if the master would uh, humble himself to wash uh, his disciples' feet, then those of us who he have entrusted his word, we should be humble enough to do the things that our master would have done for us. But Jesus declares this. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And in all that he was speaking into them, he was speaking that they might come to understand who he really is. If, if you would allow me, I'd I just like to define these three uh, terms that uh, Jesus used. Uh, he, when he says, I am the way, it is a manner, mode, or fashion. It is the passage or progress on a course. There's a way. And Jesus has given us the way, and the way is his word. The things that he has declared in our uh, presence are the things that will bring up us to him and he also declared in his word for we can't get to the father the Jehovah God except we come through Jesus Christ but you got to understand that we're not going through Jesus Christ to go to somebody else mm -hmm. when you go to Jesus Christ you have come to the father Jehovah because you came through Jesus Christ and him and the father are one he says I'm the truth it is an actual state of a matter. When Pastor went back to uh, Genesis and he was declaring who God was from the very beginning, the word of God is truth. 
And that's the only truth. You know, you, there's this new thing where people say, I'm speaking my truth. You ain't got no truth unless you speak in what God says. Because that's the truth, right? We don't get to have different degrees of truth. You believe me because I think it's true. I believe you because you think. No, I believe what God declared because it is truth. For the word of God says this. Now, and you, you have to ask yourself. The word of God says this in, 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 in Numbers uh, 23 and 19. For God is not a man that he should lie. Right? Mm -hmm. So he can't lie. But now you tell me that about any of your brothers or sisters. Who declare to be all righteous. And if they declare to be all righteous, it says you lie already. Mm. And you make God a liar. He says, I'm the way, the truth, and life. So when we look at the life, it's not the life that we live here, but it is the life. It says it is the, condi uh, uh, it is the condition that distinguish organisms from inorganic objects and dead organisms. Well, now I'm going to tie this together with what Pastor always says. <laughs> We're walking around dead. We're dead organisms, even though we have the characteristics of life. But that's all we got, characteristics of life. But we're, 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 we're more like that inorganic matter without that structure. But we receive the structure when we, are, when we repent of our sins and we're baptized in the name of Jesus and we receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And then what are we? We follow uh, uh, the light. We come into the light. We go through the door. And then we begin to understand truth that brings life to us because it is what God uh, uh, intends for us. This is how we come to life. This is how we come to know Jesus. We, we, we've got, we got to do just what the disciples did. And if we're not careful when pastors say, read slow, that, 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 that's, that's uh, valuable in a Christian's life. Because Isaiah tried to get us to understand it. You, you're not going to understand from reading one scripture. You can't run off with that. Isaiah says this line upon line. And once you read line upon line, following the scriptures from old to new, you also have to remain in precept upon precept. Build the precept. Don't take the word out of context to make it fit what you want it to fit. It has to remain in the precept of what Jesus is declaring for us to salvation. One of the things, again, as teacher was saying earlier in that 14th chapter of John, Jesus is now preparing uh, to leave his disciples, and he has taught them and showed them, but there are many things that he still didn't understand. And he was going to tell them that later on I will send, or I will come back in the form of the Spirit to live within you to help you fulfill the things that I have taught you. He says in John 5, in 24, he says, He that heareth my word or hear my sayings and believe on them, you shall have eternal life. This is the teachings that Jesus gave unto us. His ways are not our ways. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in Proverbs, there is a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end thereof is death and destruction. So in other words, we are not to follow our ways, because see, what, what happens is we want to do the things that make sense, the things that we can explain, the things that we understand. That's not the way, always the ways of God. If you start reading Matthew chapter 5 through up to Matthew chapter 7, it starts talking about the ways of God. I mean, but how to love your enemies and how to, to pray for them and how not to judge people. And how, you know, the things that don't make sense about forgiving people. And he said, yeah, I've heard it said, uh, um, love your neighbor and hate your enemies. He said, but I say it. Love your enemies mm -hmm. as you love yourself. These are the ways of God. These are the teachings of God. But in our minds, it don't make sense. You see, first of all, one of the things is that's why we must be born again to be reprogrammed. We know the ways of the world, but in being reborn again, we have to learn the ways of God. And it does not come overnight. It comes by a slow process, just like we are born in the natural and learn and grow up. It's the same way in the spiritual, but through God's word, through his training, we grow up and learn the ways of God. And that's why he's telling his disciples, he said, look, I'm not going to leave you comfortless when I'm going. I'm not going to leave you uh, by yourself to try to figure all this stuff out. I'm going to send the comforter to you that he will help you understand. He said, many things um, I've told you, and you can't remember them now, but when the comforter comes, he will reveal these things unto us. Well, see, now it sounds like 
another person is coming. But if you go to John chapter 14 and verse 18, it says, and I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. See, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. In other words, when the Holy Ghost come, mm -hmm. or when the Spirit come, this is Jesus coming back to them, not to leave them comfortless. See, we, we, we think another person is about to be in, introduced or involved. It's another manifestation of God being involved, but in that third trinity, in that trinity. But see, it's just God not in spirit form, as was in the beginning, dwelling within us to make what Jesus taught us to bring light, to bring understanding, and to bring clarity. Because what we must understand is the spiritual aspect of things. He, he, he says at one time, have I been so long with y'all and y'all still don't know who I am? He said to Thomas, he that has seen me has seen the Father. Teacher said it again. If you don't believe me for my words, mm -hmm. believe mm -hmm. me for the very works sake. Because Nicodemus said, no man can do these things except God be with him. But sometimes we are so fixated and caught up in our own ways, in our own understanding. When God is standing right before us, when God is working right in our presence, we miss it. Mm -hmm. Because we're looking for something different when Jesus is standing right before us. So a lot of times we miss heaven, we miss God, because we're trying to get to God and to get to heaven without going through Jesus. Mm -hmm. And you can't get there without going through him. And Jesus laid out the way. I am the door. You know, and, and in order to get to the get through to the Father, you got to come through this mm -hmm. door. Here come that cliche. Here come that old broken record. Lord, how do I get through the door? By repenting, by being baptized in Jesus' name, by receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. Now you've entered the door. You've entered the door. And all of these things that Jesus has said are the ways of, uh, are the way are we supposed to walk, the way are we supposed to conduct ourselves, to, that the people, that the world may know that now we are of God and not we ourselves because how? By our actions. That we have love now one for another. But without God, we cannot do these things. See, so many times we think just by becoming a member of the church that we don't get to heaven. Singing on the choir, we don't get to heaven. We don't get, no, 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 those are works. So no, no, no. You have to come through faith, through Jesus Christ. Not working, but by faith, by believing. And when we believe, we put our belief into action. So what gets us into heaven, what gets us to God is belief. Just believing and trusting who he is and following what his words say do. So John says to us, he gives us a glimpse of the hope of the revelation of the Lord. He declares unto us um, that uh, Jesus, after uh, his crucifixion, ascends into heaven to sit on the throne. Um, and, uh, but he says, uh, I go. He says, in my father's house are many mansions, verse 2 of 14. And if it were, and if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. I, you know, we, we say some hard things sometimes uh, because of what is believed by the many. As I stated before, this is one of the New Testament scriptures that so often uh, read to comfort families uh, upon the decease of a loved one. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, this scripture does not help the person that is deceased that's lying mm -hmm. in a casket or that has been uh, cremated in, in an urn. This scripture is to comfort those that yet have a natural life mm -hmm. that have not yet come to that spiritual life. I mean, listen, I mean, it, it, we, we can't preach anybody in the heaven. And if you have not already come uh, to God through Jesus Christ, that scripture, it really isn't helping that deceased person. And you, you need to understand, God is preparing a way for those of us that are yet alive. You, you know, uh, in, in Hebrews 11, 
and, and, and 6, it says, Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must first believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So we have to look for the Lord Jesus Christ in the form that he came, God himself. Remember, uh, Jehovah started introducing Jesus from the very beginning. Jesus comes in the gospel and he says, a new testament I leave with you. And, and, and this new testament is that we would have love for one another. And love is what God declared. He asked Peter and Matthew, Simon, do you love me? And Simon said, yeah, Lord, I love you. Watch how God measured love. He said, then feed my sheep. Mm -hmm. Simon, do you love me? He said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Feed my lamb. Simon, do you love me? Well, I mean, God, uh, the same three times that Simon uh, 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 re rejected Jesus, God is asking him about his love for him, right? And, and, and Simon said, in, 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 in frustration, you didn't ask me to... Uh, same thing three times. You know I love you. Then he says, well, if you really do, feed my sheep. Well, okay, I love the Lord. So I say some hard things, but they're not my things. Because as Jesus said in his word, he says, the things I speak to you, mm -hmm. I don't speak of myself. I can only speak to you what God has given me, Jehovah has given me to declare unto you. Because what that is, it is life. It is life. Not, not the life that you live when you're walking around breathing. We're not going to be that inorganic matter without structure. The structure comes from God's word. So when we receive God's word, yes, he is preparing a place for those of us who receive him. Now, until we get to that place, what Pastor just told us is he sends that comforting spirit. Because let me tell you something. Whatever is in this world, we are subject to mm -hmm. We're subject to whatever the world offers. But what the word of God says is, listen, you're in the world, but you're not of the world. So even though my body, and, that, and you have to, again, pastors, you got to learn how to separate them. Even though my body is in the world, even though my body is subject to the things of the world, Jesus said, but you're not of the world. I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world. So then I don't have to uh, go through a life as the world goes through life because I have a comforting spirit. Am I going to get sick? Well, let me just say, I am sick. <laughs> am I going to have disease? Yeah, let me just tell you, disease is in the body. Do I have struggle sometimes in my mind? Yes, because that's why the uh, Bible told us in Ephesians that we got to put on the whole arm. We can't just protect a part of us. We got to protect all of us. God is preparing a place for those of us who are prepared to go with him when he comes to receive the church unto himself. And we will not be able to go back with the Lord unless we have come into the way, into the truth, and received life. Now is the time. Now is the acceptable time. Uh, in, in Hebrews, again, uh, the writer Paul says, Today when you hear my word, don't harden your heart. Not as in the days of old when, you know, God would speak to them and they didn't want to hear. Or in these days when we try uh, by the help of the Lord and his comforting spirit to teach in truth. Teach with the illumination of light that our minds and understanding will grow. Because that's what this is. When you come into the way, the truth, and the life, you grow and you become that person that you're able not only to be strengthened by what you've learned, you know, from that manna that came down from heaven, you know, from the water that came from the rock. You remember Jesus says, I'm going to give you an everlasting water. Not that one that you drink today and you thirst tomorrow, but that one that's everlasting springing up in you. This is the way. You know, when, when, when the devil tries, you know, listen, we're cast down, but we're not. Yeah, he's coming after us because that's his purpose. And I think it's the fourth chapter of Matthew when Jesus was led into the a mountain. I mean, listen, 
Uh, he was led there to be tempted. So the devil's coming after us. That's his job. And, and, the, and, and Thessalonians says, and he will, as long as he that let, lets. But then one day, he's going to stop him. And we won't have to worry about him anymore. Then we will be ushered into this place that God has prepared for us if we're ready to go back with him. To try to make it plain, simple, clear, it talks about a leading. It talks about life. It talks about uh, 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 life eternal and, and being with God. We have to go back to when Israel was in Egypt and God brought them out of Egypt. Now, he was going to lead them a way that they didn't know. So he led them by fire, by night, and cloud by day. He led them to what we call the promised land, a land that will be flowing with milk and honey. There were many obstacles in the way. There were many trials and tests and stuff in the way to prove our faithfulness unto him to reach that promised land that God had prepared for them. That was a physical journey. Our journey is coming out of sin, and we're traveling a way that we don't know. Jesus is the way. Why? Because he has traveled this way. He's traveled this path. So in order for us to get to where he wants us to be, we have to trust him. We have to follow him by faith, and by believing and trusting in him. We don't know this way. We can't see this way. But he is the way that we're going to follow him to lead us to where he would have us to be. It says again, and so many times the teacher was saying about this body that we live in, that the things that we're going to have to go through, we have to go through these things because of sin. Because of sin, these bodies are contaminated. These bodies are diseased. These bodies are going to, are going to die. And no matter what goes on in the world, we are subject to it. But what he has done for us, by us following him, he is preparing another place for us. That if this old house get destroyed, or this old house let us down, there's a new house that we're going to live in. Well, see, it, 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 that's why he's saying, don't get so attached to this. He said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Well, in 2 Corinthians 5 and 1 says, if this earthly house of this tabernacle be dissolved, we have a new house, a new building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heaven. For in this we groan in earnestly desiring to be closed with our, with our house, which is from heaven. So in other words, in this one, because of what we have to go through, because of the contamination of sin, Jesus is showing us a way to go that will lead us to get to a new house. It says again in Matthew, straight is the way, and narrow is, you know, in other words, it's a straight and narrow way. Everybody's not going to be on that road, but every now and then you're going to meet somebody. So sometimes we feel that because there are so few people traveling this way, this is not the right way. That crowded way is the right way. He said, no, that's the wrong way. Because everybody's going that way. And those that are going that way, they're pushing the shovel. They're going to destruction. But if you follow that straight and narrow way, it's going to lead you to where you will have a new place, a new house to live in. See, a lot of us think that he's a mansion. A lot of us think that when we go to heaven, we can see all these tall buildings and five bedroom houses and basements and five car garages. That's my mansion. No, you're not going to see that. What is in heaven, that new house that God has made for us, is a new body. A new eternal body, a one that will live for heaven, no more pain, that will take off, shake off this uh, mortal and put on immortality. So that's what Second Corinthians, uh, First Corinthians 15 starts, starts talking about, getting rid of the old, putting on the new. So as we follow God through this uh, a physical, spiritual journey in this physical body, it is preparing us for that place that he has prepared for us. But in order for us to get there, we have to follow him. We have to allow him to lead us and direct us in the path that we have to go. And if we walk in him, we will not walk in darkness. Walking in darkness is walking in our understanding, walking in our way, walking in what we think is right. But we walk in the light. It is walking in God's word. It is walking in his direction. So anytime you want to uh, 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 follow direction or walk the right way, read the word. Follow the word. And that's why Jesus said the Holy Ghost. Because in this physical body... We can't walk this way. In this physical body, on our own, we can't accomplish these things. But the Bible says, after the Holy Ghost, you should have power. 
He comes to direct us. He comes to lead us. He comes to give us the strength to do what we can't do on our own to fulfill walking this way that Jesus Christ has laid for us. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. When Jesus took the sins of the world upon himself and he went uh, to Calvary and was crucified for us and then took our sins into the grave, it was a display of that watery grave that we go into into baptism because when Jesus went into the grave, he had sin upon him. Mm -hmm. Never any mm -hmm. sin in him. Never. But he took sin to the grave. Now listen. Sin needs a host. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sin can't live without some place to live in. There's a scripture in the Bible where a man was cleansed. His house was cleansed. And he didn't go any further, and then the demons that were washed out of him uh, found out that he was empty, went and got seven more, even more wickeder than he was, and brought them, and they moved back. They need a host to live in. Well, when Jesus went into the grave, sin no longer had a host to live in because sin parted from Jesus Christ because it was never in him. It was on him, right? So he released sin to the grave and freed us. But in order for us to be free, we have to come in to the way of Jesus Christ. In Psalms 24 and 3, listen what it says. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? Verse 4 says, he that have clean hands and a pure heart, he have not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. Isaiah tried to give us an insight. He says, in Isaiah 26 and 2, he says, Open ye the gates, that the righteous nations which keepeth the truth may enter in. We're talking about Jesus. Those who keep the word of the Lord, that they might be able to come in because he is the righteousness that covers us. You know, I mean, we have to come to this. I have no righteousness of my own. You know, the Bible says this of me. All of my righteousness is like filthy rags. Mm -hmm. So I, mean, I need the righteousness of Christ that I might be able to come into this place that God has prepared for me. When Jesus said in John 10 and 9, he says, I am the door by any man. By, by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. And go in and out and find pastures, green pastures, because that's the way it is. We, when we begin to live for the Lord, regardless of what the Lord allows to happen in my life, then we have the word of God that will strengthen us because we know the way. We know that he is the way. So we come to him. There is nothing that we're going to experience in this life that the Lord has not, or Jesus Christ himself has not already experienced. The, the Bible says this, for he became our high priest. You understand? But for once, you know, he didn't go, he doesn't go constantly in to the Holy of Holies. He has brought us into the Holy of Holies when we come into him because he is the Holy of Holies and that's the place that we rest. Yes, when pastor said those mansions, yeah, he prepared them. But he says in Thessalonians, listen, we got to be changed. Mm -hmm. we, 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 these bodies will not inhabit heaven. But in the moment, the twinkling of an eye, We've got to take off mortality and put on immortality. So that means these bodies, even though God designed them, Jehovah designed them to live forever because we fell, then he says the day that you eat of the, the tree, you shall die. But then after he came back and says, I am the life. I give life. That breath that he blew into us in Genesis is only for the natural man. When the Holy Ghost fell on the day of Pentecost, oh man, something miraculous happened. They had a life that they had never had before, even though they were in the presence of the Lord Jesus. And there are a lot of people in his presence, but they don't come through the door. 
They're just in the presence of the Lord. You got to go through the door. We have to understand that the power of the Lord is when we come into him. Because he says, not only am I in the Father, but the Father is in me. So not only can we be in Jesus, but Jesus has to be in us. There are a lot of things that they just didn't understand until the power of the Holy Ghost came. Listen, you remember, uh, Peter says, oh, Lord, I don't care who, who, hmm. who denies you. I, I'm never going to deny you. And he said, Peter, listen, I, I appreciate what you're saying. He said, but before the cock crows, you're going to deny me thrice. Not me, Lord. Never. Never. But when the cock crew, Peter recognized that he had denied Christ thrice. But the Lord says, Peter, don't worry about it. I understand, because you don't have what you need yet. He said, but when you are strengthened, strengthen the brethren. And on the day of Pentecost, that same cowardly Peter received the power of the Holy Ghost, came down and preached the word. And after preaching the word, the power of the unction of the Holy Ghost rests upon him, and they begin to do the work of the Lord. Declaring what the Lord says is, listen, when they were going to, uh, into the temple to pray and the man was begging alms, he said, listen, silver and gold, listen, you, we're not going to give you something temporary because we've had that already. But Jesus has given us something everlasting. Silver and gold, we don't have. But what we do have is really what you need. He says, rise up and walk. And when the man was filled with the power of God, he began to leap for joy. That's the true life. The life that's on the inner man, not on the outer man. And when we are changed, we are changed with that inner man now flourishing. You know, then maybe it's too late then, but then we begin to see that God and Jesus are one. I'm the same, the same that is, 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 is that, that being that will be in heaven. You know, we always say, well, when I get to heaven, I'm going to look for such and such. When I get to heaven, I won't see Jesus. I don't, I, I'm not concerned about any, anybody else. And as Pastor said, you ain't going to see no mansions. And, and, and let me tell you, it's sad to say, you ain't going to see your mama, <laughs> you ain't going to see your daddy, your husband, your wife, your children, or nobody else. Not in the form that you saw them on earth because they've been changed. We're going to heaven not to socialize. We do too much of that here. We're going to heaven to worship and honor God. That was our sole purpose for being created. Not for having these social events and socializing, you know, as in a way of, of worship. No. Worship is true. You know, that's what the word of God says. For the Lord seeketh him that will worship him. What? In spirit and, truth. and in truth. So that's what we're coming to if we come into that place that God has prepared for us. Because Jesus is the only way. He is the only truth. And he is the only life. Why is it so important to follow Jesus? It's important to follow him because it will keep us from eternal damnation. When we follow the ways of God. And a lot of times we try to figure out, uh, uh, we, we, we make fun of it. We, 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 we say, well, this, uh, the life that I'm living now, if I go to hell, mm. all my mm. friends are going to mm. be there and we're going to have a good time. <laughs> and I got to die something, but I'm going to enjoy myself. Mm. I'm going to do this here, this and that. And a lot of times uh, uh, we feel like this is it. People kill themselves because of the distress that they're going through on this side and they think that it's all over with. What happened is it is over with on this side, but on the eternal side, there is an eternal damnation that one would have to go through throughout eternity. Somebody said, why would God send people to hell? God do not send people to hell. We send ourselves. The Bible says that hell was not made for man, but it was made for Satan and his angels. But because of the disobedience of man, because of man refusing to follow the way of God, hell is being enlarged every day. As teacher was talking about uh, being changed in 1 Corinthians 15, and it says, on, at, uh, 15 go to 49, it says, well, if you go to uh, 47, the first man is of the earth, mm -hmm. earthly. The mm -hmm. second man is of the Lord from heaven. 
as it is as the earthly such are they also are the earth excuse me as is the earthly such are they also that are earthly and as as is the heavenly such are they also that are heavenly and as we have borne the image of the earth we shall also bear the image of the heavenly now this i say brother that Brother, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, for mm -hmm. uh, another can corruption inherit incorruption. But I show you a mystery. We should not all sleep. Well, this is Paul talking about now the changing. Mm -hmm. That this earthly body cannot inherit the kingdom. It has to be changed. For flesh and blood cannot get there. One of the things that you understand when Jesus came off the cross, when Jesus died, and when Jesus went to heaven, there was no blood in him. Said blood contaminates. There was no blood. So when we are, 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 are going back with the Lord, there's not going to be any blood within us. But we'll have on that spiritual body that we will live forever because blood corrupts. And it says that this, for the corruptible must put on incorruption and the mortal must put on immortality. So when the corruption has put on incorruption and the mortal has put on immortality, then shall it be brought to pass the same which is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? For the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, he giveth us victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, one of the things, again, and we often say that, you know, when I die, it's all over with, and we're not going to go through anything. Turn to Revelations real quick, in chapter 20, verse 21. I mean, verse 11. This is what happens to the people that don't know God. Well, we talk about eternal life, we talk about everlasting life. Everybody's going to live forever. Everybody's going to live forever. But it depends on our following Jesus or not following Jesus, determines on where we're going to live forever. Chapter uh, 20 and verse uh, 11 in uh, Revelation 20, 11, verse, Revelation 20, verse 11. This is what it says. And I saw a great white throne, him that sat on it whose face the earth and the heavens fled away. And there was found no place for them. Watch. I saw the dead, mm -hmm. small and great, standing before God. And the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. The sea gave up the dead which were in it. Mm -hmm. Death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they will judge every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Of fire. Lord, Lord. This is not the end. <laughs> See, there is a life after this. As teacher said, he was said, and Adam became a living soul. When God formed Adam from the dust of the earth, just like you see a dead person in the casket laying up like this right here, no life is in, that's, that's the way Adam was mm -hmm. on the ground. Mm -hmm. And when God blew the breath of life in him, it didn't become a living body, it became a living soul, and soul gave life to the body. So when the soul departs from this earthly body, it goes back to the dust where it came from. The breath goes back to God. Not us, us, but the breath goes back. So now we're in a waiting place for that time of the resurrection. We're in a place where Luke talks about uh, uh, one person in torment, one person in the bosom of God. We're not in heaven yet. Paul said, I, I saw a third, in the third heaven, I saw the distant bodies. We were waiting for all of us to go back together with God. But there is a judgment after this life that we have to stand before God. And when we follow God, when we are baptized in Jesus' name, we receive the gift of the Lord, our name is written in the book of life. That seals that we, and, and as we follow God, it will show us living with him throughout eternity. But if our names are not written in the book of life, hell is our destiny. I didn't see that. The lake of fire is our destination. This is what the word of God said. So it's very important for us, not just to become a part of the church, of a church, but become a part of the church, the mythical body of Jesus Christ. And there ain't but one way of becoming a part of that church. It, it, you know, it's not giving the preacher your hand and giving God your heart. It's not recording what Romans say, if I confess the Lord Jesus Christ. It is by action. It is by being baptized in Jesus' name. Going under, in water, not sprinkling, that, that, that. it's not that. It's not rubbing water on your face in the name of the Father. It's not that. That's not the way of God. 
The way of God is to be submerged or emerge in water in the name Lord Jesus. There is no other name whereby men must be saved but the name Jesus. So you have to go down in Jesus' name. And Romans tell us we rise to walk in a newness of life. We left the old man behind us, but in order to continue that walk, the Holy Ghost must come in. How do we know when the Holy Ghost is coming to one's life? They speak in another tongue. Is the evidence. Not so much for the people around us, but for you. That you will know that something has happened in your life. Because remember, as Peter came out of the upper room, as he spoke in tongues, teacher was saying, that same Peter that was a coward, now he stood up brave and he spoke Jesus after his transformation of the Holy Ghost. So we have to come to the mediator of life. And the Bible declares in uh, 1 Timothy 5, or excuse me, 1 Timothy 2 and 5, for there is one God mm -hmm. and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. In Hebrews 8 and 6 it says, but now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises. Those promises of life, eternal, not based on the physical man, but based on the spiritual man. Again, we, you know, it says in 2 Timothy 1 and 10, it says, but now, but, but, now, but is now made manifested by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. I, I often say, and I know sometimes it's one of those things that are, are difficult, um, because we have uh, heard all of our lives that Matthew begins the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are synoptic gospels that usher us in the New Testament. The New Testament begins after Acts 2 and the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Jesus came into the world as the light of the world to bring us to the knowledge of that new covenant that would be established that we could come into that we might have again be ushered back into the garden and that we might have a right to the tree of life. This is what Jesus' purpose was when he came into the world. He said it. I've not come to destroy you. I've not even come to judge you. Because there is a time, that's what Pastor was talking about, there is a time of judgment coming. I have came, I've come, excuse me, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Well, having life abundantly is coming into the knowledge of what Jesus has done, those mansions that he is preparing. We can live in this body, in this body, and not be destroyed. We can live in this body and not be forsaken. We can live in this body and not be cast down. Because we, we, you know, we know we're going to be persecuted as long as we're in the body. But, but, but because he is our mediator, the, the word of God says, you know, he is the high priest. He goes in before us. He's already gone into heaven. You know, he already knows what it's going to take for us to come into the presence of God. Uh, uh, of his, his glory and he made the way for us and that way is made through his word and if we come into the word if we humble ourselves and we follow the word of God you know I mean, and, and, it, and, and it takes humility because I mean there's so many things taught you know I mean, it, it was a struggle for me to come to the point where when you know somebody told me that Matthew, Mark, Luke and John were not New Testament I said, but what do you mean? That's, what, that's what's written in the Bible. Yeah, that's, that, it is written in the Bible. But in Hebrews it says a New Testament can't begin until the testor has died. 
Jesus didn't die until the end of the synoptic gospel. So then the New Testament couldn't be ushered in in Matthew or Mark, Luke, and John. It could be ushered in after he was crucified. And after he was crucified, on the day that he sent the Holy Ghost down, that is what he's talking about in this 14th chapter of St. John. That comforting spirit, that New Testament. He says, and I leave with you today a New Testament. And what is it? That ye should love one another. Because that's, it says, by this, by this, will the world know that you belong to me when you have love one for another. Jesus is love. He is love. And uh, 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 John uh, uh, 3 and 16 says, For God, uh, mm -hmm. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And we love Jesus enough to give our lives unto him and to walk the way that he says and not walk the way of the world. Uh, th there, there, there is a, 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 a scripture where Paul uh, says, listen, there was a time in my past mm -hmm. huh? <laughs> that, that I, I, <laughs> I came against this way. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, and, and, and so many people are, 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 are against what we're teaching. Paul says, I, can't, I persecuted it. Mm. But Lord have mercy, my eyes were open. When I saw the bright light, I saw Jesus himself. He said, and I saw him out of due time. I didn't see him when the other disciples saw him. I saw him out of due time. But there was a change in my life, and that's how it's got to be. Jesus has to be more important to you than anything else in this world if you want to have eternal life with him. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to close. Because uh, what I was going to say... You got it. So, it. But, but, but I'm going to just tell you to do this right here. Sometimes we think because we are religious mm. that we are right, that we got this thing right. If you look at Paul's resume, mm. he's, I was a Hebrew of Hebrews. Mm. I, I learned under Gamaliel, Gamaliel, one of the strictest Jewish teachers there were. As far as touching the law, I was blameless. I kept it. Mm. But if you go to that ninth chapter of Acts when Paul was on the road to Damascus to do harm to God's people and God struck him down. Paul said, I thought I was a teacher. I thought I was going the right way. Hmm. But after having an encounter with Jesus, I found out that I was going the wrong way. In verse uh, 20, he said, and straight away after he received mm -hmm. his sight, he started preaching Jesus. And if you go over to Acts chapter 20, uh, uh, verse, I mean, Acts, Acts 19, 21, those that have been baptized in Father, Son, mm -hmm. Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. and said this is that and this is that, no, and, and if, if, if you hear God's word and read Acts 19 verses uh, uh, 2 through uh, 6, if you obey and follow the ways of God, your eyes will bec become open and you'll see. Mm. It is not Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. You only be baptized in titles. The name is Jesus. Jesus. There's so much. We just, I, yeah, you can. Father, it is in your holy Lord. name, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord. We come Lord. this morning just to say thank you, O yes. God, for your revealing to us that you are the way through Jesus Christ. That by following him, by following his sayings, O God, it will lead us to you. For Colossians say you are the image, of, mm -hmm. he is the image of the invisible God. The invisible God made flesh through Jesus Christ. You came to live among us, O God, to show us the way and to teach us how to get back to you. For Father, thou bless, O God, that we abolish our ways, we turn, turn from our ways and follow you, O God. That you make clear, you make plain unto us that which you would have us know. That's what you would have us see, that what you would have us do, that what you would have us say. For we have no life of our own, God, because you are our life. We have no words of our, you are the words, oh God, that it lead to eternal life. So bless us, oh God, that we abandon our ways and we adopt your ways and we follow you. We can only do this through the power and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, Father, bless and do it for your glory. Do it for your honor. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. And present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceedingly joy. To the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now, henceforth, and forevermore. In Jesus' name, let God's people say together, Amen. Amen. Well, we, you can tell that we enjoy yeah. ourselves uh, in the Lord. And uh, so we, we're not going uh, 
to uh, keep you much longer. We've been already ex exceeded our time. But listen, we appreciate you uh, for following us and certainly for sharing the word of God with others. So as you keep us in prayer, we will keep you in prayer and certainly that God will continue to reveal to you his truth out of his word, using us only as conduits because we have nothing to give you but what God has given us. So with that, we say peace, we love you, and as it is God's will, we will see you on next Sunday. Amen.